Whether we like it or not, the life of each of us ends in death, unfortunately. So it was, so it is, and so it will be. And although we seem to have long known what to do with the bodies of the deceased, mourn, bury, gather with relatives for a gloomy funeral meeting. Oh, is that a cake? Mmm. Got carried away. Let's move on. The point is, it's not that simple when it comes to funerals. Why are traditional burial and cremation methods really dangerous? How do the dead harm the living? Why does the earth risk turning into one huge toxic burial ground? And how do future technologies propose solving burial problems? We'll tell you right now, after we finish the cake. Just one sec. Just like the bride from Kill Bill, many don't fancy the idea of being buried in moist soil. Cemeteries are long outdated and in their current state are more likely to cause harm than honor the memory of the departed. But even with the growing popularity of cremation, there will always be a need for a place where you can store the remains of deceased loved ones. After all, sooner or later, the same season finale awaits us all. Unless, of course, if you don't decide to become immortal, we talk about this in the pop-up above. Nevertheless, there's a number of problems with burials. First of all, believe it or not, cemeteries occupy a lot of land. Today, more than 7 billion people live on the planet, and only 200 years ago, there were only 1 billion of us. And the number is growing. In some countries, there's not even enough space for the living, let alone the dead. And where to bury all these billions in a 100 years? For example, in 25 years, so many people will die in the United States alone that a site the size of Las Vegas will be required for their burial. Jackpot? Hardly. Secondly, the process of corpse decomposition emits carbon dioxide, methane, freon, the one in the refrigerator, yeah, benzene, and over 400 substances and gases. And those gases, too. Thirdly, it's another punch to the environment. Let's look at the numbers and be timidly horrified. In the United States, over 16 million liters of embalming liquids, which are toxic by the way, fall into the ground every year due to burials. That's on top of more than 1.5 million tons of reinforced concrete, 17,000 tons of copper and bronze, and almost 65,000 tons of steel. That amount of resources is easily enough to build a Terran base somewhere on Jupiter or a small town on Mars. To solve the problem with the lack of accessible graves, authorities often encourage citizens to choose cremation instead of burial. Since cremation ashes require much less space. And since cremation is not welcomed by some religions, your soul will burn in hell anyway! At least spare the body! Representatives of higher powers on Earth propose to arrange the coffins vertically to minimize the space needed for each body. By the way, if religion forbids you to subscribe and click the bell so as not to miss new videos, we get you, but we won't forgive you. So if a believer does not object to cremation or vertical burial, then they most likely will not oppose to being buried in a skyscraper. Even after death, you want to be closer to heaven. Some architects are already developing projects for vertical cemeteries. One of them, Martin McSherry, a student at the Royal Danish School of Architecture in Copenhagen, introduced the Skyscraper Cemetery Project. This high-altitude cemetery consists of a series of burials with square slabs on the floor, each placed on top of the lower one. The vertical cemetery is structurally supported by an exoskeleton instead of traditional columns, which maximizes the effective area. Another important design feature is the crane adjacent to the building. It's designed to lift and place coffins in grooves inside the structure. Over time, more tomb floors will be added to the building using a crane. Of course, the building will stop growing when it reaches the maximum permissible height, but it will definitely become the tallest building in the city. We hope that God won't play Jenga with it. Currently, Martin's project remains a dream, but for how long? The lack of land is already a serious problem in Norway and many other countries. For example, in lots of European countries, every burial place is no longer permanently fixed for one person, but processed for reuse after 20 years when the body has decomposed. But even with this measure, the land is still scarce, and Martin's project can be a salvation for those who don't want to dig out their grandfather every 20 years. And although this is a good way to solve the problem of free space, what about the problem of environmental pollution? There seems to be a solution for it as well. By the way, this will probably sound strange, but 
What would you like to happen to your body after your death? Buried in a cemetery skyscraper, in the traditional way, or one of the new ways that we'll talk about a little further? Maybe something completely different? Write in the comments. Katrina Spade and her company Recompost are off to start in Seattle, Washington in 2021. Katrina boldly calls Recompost the first company in the world to compost humans, the gentle conversion of human remains into soil, in a process she calls recomposition or natural organic reduction. The company has been operating for many years, but it became a legally viable service only this year, when Washington passed a historic bill that became the first U.S. state to allow human composting. The composting process is based on the traditional principles of green graves, but occurs inside reusable vessels. The bodies are covered with wood shavings and ventilated, providing an ideal environment for natural microbes and beneficial bacteria. Within 30 days, the body is completely transformed, creating the soil that can then be used to give birth to a new life. When the composting process is completed, the family and friends of the deceased are invited to take a part or all of the cubic yard of soil and use it to grow their very own trees or any plants. The process is designed in such a way as to ensure greater environmental friendliness of the funeral ritual. Getting rid of the burial of embalmed corpses in wooden boxes or burning of the remains, the consequences of which cannot be called beneficial for nature. Recompost argues that anyone who chooses compost instead of cremation or conventional landfill will save a ton of CO2 due to carbon sequestration that occurs at different points in the process, not to mention the benefits of healthy soil. In the meantime, we will turn our eyes from Mother Earth to the vast infinity of space. Space. Endless, mysterious, dark, deep, bottomless. The perfect place for the final trip? Since 1992, the remains, or rather, part of the ashes, of more than 450 people were sent into orbit. The first one was Star Trek creator Gene Roddenberry. A sample of his remains was delivered into space on the NASA space shuttle Pegasus XL. But space burials are available not only to science fiction icons and celebrities. Due to the private sector growing increasingly more interested in space travel, the prospects for space disposal have become more accessible. So what is space burial? Simply put, this is the process of sending cremated remains into space. It is sometimes called memorial space flights. That is, the ashes are sent into orbit for a short period of time and then returned to Earth. Although this seems logical, the remains are not sprayed into space. Loose ashes will certainly turn into space debris, and space debris includes objects such as non-functioning satellites and spent rocket stages. As of this year, 128 million fragments less than one centimeter in diameter are orbiting around the Earth. Solar panels, telescopes, and star trackers are particularly vulnerable to damage to these seemingly small grains of sand. It's important to minimize the effects of ash in space as much as possible. Elysium Space offers the affordable Shooting Star Memorial for $2,490. This service delivers a symbolic part of the remains of your loved one into the orbit of the Earth. The spaceship Elysium Memorial flies in a sun-synchronous orbit, ensuring its passage through all of the world while traveling among the stars. Family and friends, meanwhile, can track the capsule through the mobile app. At the end of the flight, the spacecraft will enter the Earth's atmosphere and burn like a shooting star. Celestis, the one that sent Star Trek's father into space, offers the most interesting option. For $12,500, the Voyager service does not just deliver the remains into orbit, but launches them into deep space beyond the limits of the solar system. Like all Celestis services, Voyager launches as a secondary payload on commercial and scientific spacecraft. Celestis claims that this method of disposal supports further exploration of deep space, the development of space science, research, and technology. With all the charm and convenience of space burials, no one will launch a rocket filled with fully-fledged corpses into space because it's expensive and because it's plain scary. Bodies are still cremated before being sent on their last journey, which does nothing but harm to the environment and requires a lot of resources. An original way to solve the problem is offered by the Swedish biologist Suzanne Wig Masak. Using specially designed equipment, the body of a deceased person is sprayed with liquid nitrogen to cryogenically freeze the remains to a temperature of about negative 196 degrees Celsius, or negative 320.8 degrees Fahrenheit, which crystallizes the cells of the body. 
After that, the body vibrates for several minutes, frozen cells decay, turning the body into crystallized particles which are then collected for the next phase, cold drying. This procedure reduces the weight of the remaining body particles to about 30% of the original weight of the deceased. For example, a human body that originally weighed 154 pounds will produce approximately 44 pounds of body particles. Then all metals are removed, artificial teeth, surgical implants, sodium, mercury, and over 50 other foreign substances. Finally, the remaining body particles are placed in a biodegradable container made from corn or potato starch, which is then sealed. This container, although not technically a coffin, performs the same function and is designed in such a way as to enhance and control the interaction of human remains with air, water, and microorganisms to facilitate the process of natural decomposition. Compared to burial or cremation, Promession offers several environmental benefits. Unlike cremation, which requires natural gas and generates a lot of mercury, Promession will not cause harmful emissions and pollution. And unlike traditional land graves, Promession will reduce the demand for land. To bury the remains underground at an estimated depth of 12 to 20 inches will require significantly less space than for traditional burial in coffins. In fact, Susan Wig Masak estimates that the remains will turn into soil in about 6 to 18 months, becoming part of the natural ecological cycle. Is there life after death? Unfortunately, the answer to this question will only be found when life ends. So it's time to remind you that you should not waste it. And also, it's worth remembering that even though we all pass away sooner or later, we will still remain in someone else's hearts. And perhaps we will reincarnate and even after death, we'll be able to influence the life of mankind. For example, choosing composting instead of burial, a person will give life to an apple tree. A child will play under the apple tree, a ripe apple will fall on his head, and voila, another Newton is born. Who knows? One thing remains certain, technology does not stand still, and we at BrainFrame will be telling you about it to the grave. Unless our minds go into digital space, of course, but we'll talk about that some other time. Thank you for watching, and for your likes and subscriptions, too. Take care. BrainFrame out.